Amen. There's power in surrender. I want you to know tonight that there is a release of an anointing, and it's for warriors. It's for warriors. And the Spirit said, I want to talk about what's a warrior's life. You know, a warrior doesn't have a life. If you compare a soldier in the military, amen, that soldier is dedicated to that branch of military. That person does not have a life. They go through a boot camp to separate their worldly life to get another life. People in the military, being in the military, it's a different lifestyle. They're not a part of society. They have their own citizenship, their own branch, and who they are. They're separated from the world. Though they're, they protect the world, but they're still separated from the world. And we are the same way. God brings us through training for reigning, and we learn through our sufferings, hopefully. And there's a, an area to where God's presence, the exchange starts to come. Where we begin to realize that it's been God's presence we've been looking for the whole time. See, that's the difference between the military and the secular world and God's military. We carry the presence of God. We carry his love. We carry truth. We carry power. When you carry a, a, a warrior's anointing and, and learning how to be a, have a life of a warrior, the demons fear you. You don't fear them. Because you know that you're dead already. You've died. So how can you kill someone that's already dead? Amen? That's what Jesus said. We've died with Christ. So I want to talk a little bit tonight about a warrior's life. Why? Because that's why you're here. You're in this room to lose a life of the world and become a life of a warrior. That's what this is about. That's what this whole ministry is about. Again, this ministry is not man-made. It's God-made. No man could do what God does here. Amen. That's all he's asking for, the cooperation to continue to follow, submit, trust. It's the same thing in the military. You don't have a say when you're in boot camp. Hello? I mean, you, you just do whatever they tell you to do. And it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to listen to you anyway. And you, they put you in, in the kitchen for the first part so to teach you. Everything is about discipline. Discipline is a key. Without discipline, you can't win anything. You must have discipline to get strong. You must have discipline. Without discipline, you can't have nothing. You lose it all. And discipline is where a routine is built for me and you. But it's a... A routine of a new life. Amen? It's not a ritual. It's a routine. Just like in boot camp. They teach you a routine. Every day you got to make the bed the same way. Every day there's a certain thing. Chow's at a certain time. You make it or you lose it. <laughs> you don't have a free will. You do have a free will. If you want to run, they're going to arrest you and put you in jail. But, you know, God doesn't arrest you. Well, he kind of does. <laughs> I can't say he won't arrest you. <laughs> but he will get your attention. Would you turn to Ephesians 6, please? Whoa, yes! Glory. Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Warrior's life. Now, once you get a warrior's life, you've got to maintain that position as a warrior. 
See, the Enemo try to get you to be turned into a wimp. And try and load you down with burdens and all kinds of stuff and try to mislead you and distract you. And in verse 10, let's speak it together, please. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong. That means tight. Be tight. Be strong. Be tight with the Lord. Amen? That you may be what? Well, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his what? And the power of his might. See, the closer you are, the more power you have. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery, deception of the devil and every other devil. <laughs> Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. See, we don't fight against the things of the physical, temporary realm, but the unseen, the unseen evil influences of darkness. They have blind individuals from the light of the truth and keep them bound. So again, a warrior's life in the spirit is totally different. You know, you've got all these warriors and whatever, gangs and whatever, fighting one another, but that's all physical. They have no idea what's influencing them to do those things. If they did, they would turn around. And defeat that which was unseen. So you and I are battlers in the spirit realm of the unseen. That's what separates us from the world. We restrain the powers of darkness to complete their assignments. We stop them. We invade their locations. We call destructive fire down. We bind blind, mute, and deaf them. We cast them out of positions. We expose them. Amen? And Mark 16... Sixteen, sixteen. Oh, hallelujah. All right, let's start at 15. He said to them, go into what? All the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. What's the gospel? It's a message of truth. Amen? And he who believes. What's the word believe mean? To follow. See, there's the big kicker. There's a lot of people that say they're believers, but they're not followers. God says you're a liar. Amen? He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he does not, listen, baptized by the blood of Christ. That's what this is about. There is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there's a baptism of the blood of Christ. When you get baptized in water, it's symbolic of being baptized and cleansed by the blood of Christ. But he who does not believe or does not follow will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow. In my name, they will what? Cast out demons. I think that's wonderfully amazing that that's the first thing he says. Why? Why does he say that? Why being the first thing? He doesn't say, you're going to prosper first. You're going to do this first. You're... No, he says, you're going to cast out devils first. Because that's the priority. That's what we're called to do. Remove them. Hello? But you need to remove them out of your life before you start removing them out of anywhere else. And these signs will follow those who believe and follow me. In my name, they're going to cast out demons. Now, see, there's something you got to know. You got to know it. You must believe it. And you must activate your faith to do it. But you got to be close. You got to be filled with the Spirit of God. They will speak with new tongues. That's what you just heard when we started off. Amen. You'll get a new language. Praise God. You can speak directly to God. And you ain't got to figure out what you're saying. That means you can't mess it up. They will take up serpents, that's demonic forces, and if they drink anything deadly by mistake, it will what? 
by no means hurt them. That means you, you don't go test God and siphon gas. Amen. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They're going to recover somehow. It could be immediately. It could be in the process. But they're going to recover. And that isn't your concern. You do what God tells you to do and God does the rest. Amen. I've heard people complain. Well, I didn't get healed. I laid someone, the Lord told me to go lay hands on someone, and they didn't get healed. Well, how do you know? And since when are you God? We're to allow God to have the last say in everything we do. And they will recover. Warrior's life has the ability to see the unseen. They're dedicated to a new life of serving the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts of heaven. He is the commander-in-chief of the army and the military. We serve him. Amen? We have, a, as children, we have a relationship with the Father, but as warriors, we serve the commander-in-chief, the Lord of hosts. Ephesians 2. A warrior's life. One that fights every single day. No fight, no win. No fight, no victory. Amen? Think about how many times when you have somebody's backslidden or whatever, they, didn't, they, they stopped fighting. The enemy knows. You know when you're not fighting. And everyone else will know eventually. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Let's speak it. He says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. He's in the White House right now, you know, taking control of stuff. Verse 3. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, of his great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, and by God's plan, by grace, you've been saved. And he's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Very powerful. Very powerful. Underst See, we must understand the position of evil forces. A warrior understands these things. He understands that the battles, spiritual. And not physical. And when there is a battle in the physical, he goes right to the spiritual, not to the physical. No! No physical. All spiritual. Somebody's manifesting. It's not physical. It's spiritual. It's what's influencing an individual. A warrior sees through the physical. He sees through the temporary. He does not allow the physical to move him or her. Amen? Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Oh, Daniel. Oh, happy days. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chapter 10 and verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. But a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned into 
frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, I want to say that again, set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Two things that qualify. Your words were heard. Once you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself, your words will be heard. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now he's talking not physically, he's talking spiritually. These were principalities. This is an angel that's speaking to him. And behold, Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me. Michael who? Michael, <laughs> amen, one of the angel, high-ranking angel. For I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. That's kings of Persia. These are uh, principalities. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. When he had spoke such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me, nor is there any breath left in me. Then again, the one having the likeness of man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace to you, and be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for I, you have what? Strengthened me. And he said, Do you not know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight. To what? Fight. With the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, Indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds against these except Michael, your prince. Again, this is powerful. These are battles with angels. This is spiritual warfare. See, the angels are also battling for you. Your words that you are speaking, God dispatches angels. They go. They work. We work together. Every day I bind, blind, mute, and deaf. Every power of darkness will come against the angels working on my behalf. I am praying for them. And they're working on the words of God. You know, legions of angels are assigned to each person. One angel can kill 140, 180,000 people, something like that. So what do we got to worry about? Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Colossians 3. Warrior knows that the angels are moving on their behalf. Colossians chapter 3. Hallelujah. In verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. See, when we were out in the world, when I was an addict out in the world, my thought was constantly, how can I feed? Of course, I didn't know it was a demon in me. How can I get high? I lived to get high. I had no life. I was controlled by demonic forces had no idea. I used to see them. They used to run through my house, move furniture, move curtains, all kinds of stuff. Shut doors on me. I thought I lived in a haunted house. It was. 
They used to hide my dope on me. Make me tear everything apart. <laughs> I did all kinds of stuff, I'm telling you. I used to see families of them. Even when I wasn't high. Didn't stop. I could hear shores shut at the, air, shores shut at the airport. Because I'm paranoia. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing you could do. People come to your house and say, hi, everybody does a hit, and they all hide underneath your couch. <laughs> Fun. They're out there. No, they're in here. <laughs> Peeking out your windows. Hallelujah. What a how fun was that? Let's say, let's go get high. That's not fun. That's nuts. That's insanity. Hallelujah. And then you you give everything you have to go do it all over again. How stupid can we be and still breathe? It's called demon possession. Amen. <laughs> Verse 3, that's why we don't set our minds on those things no more. No more desires of those things. They're severed. Those demons are gone. Praise God. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden in Him. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you're going to also appear with Him in glory. Therefore, what? Put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to what? Put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his, with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So we're to do this. A warrior's always making a fresh exchange, always refreshing his thoughts. He knows that he can't go any further without refreshing, reconnecting every day. Every day there's a disconnect to connect, disconnect to connect. Doesn't take any chances in that. Doesn't compromise anything. Kills every corruptible seed every night. Wants nothing to be attached, nothing. No emotional attachment. Because those are killers. Keeps himself disconnected of the old man and associates. And fights to bring the new man and the kingdom of Christ on earth. Judges 7. Is everybody okay? Glory. Judges 7, verse 1. Judges chapter 7. Warrior's life. There's something about a warrior that he also does. He always maintains the fear of the Lord. That's reverence, honor, respect. And all decisions. And everything that that individual does, God is always acknowledged. He always puts the Lord before him. Waiting for the next command. Verse 1, Judges 7, let's speak it. Then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Horod. So that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into your, their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying my own hand had saved me. Oh, abilities, self-abilities and talents. Now therefore proclaim... In the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, 
Let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. I mean, he had 32,000 warriors with him, supposedly. But 22 became wimps. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Can you imagine what Gideon thought? Really, Lord? Come on, you just sent 22,000 back. I got 1,000 1, left here, 10,000 left. And you want to get rid of these guys? We're outnumbered. But the Lord is saying, stop looking physically. If I've got legions of angels behind each and every one, what are you worried about? Hallelujah. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will what? Test them for you there. Oh, I like when God tests them for me. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, and the same shall go with you. And the whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, whoever gets down on his knees to drink. Now, would a warrior get on his knees and drink? No way. He'd lose sight. He'd be distracted. Does everybody get it? He would lap like a dog. Always keeping the sword ready. Always ready. He's alert all the time. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps with the water with his tongue is a dog. You shall set apart, and everyone who doesn't gets on his knees shall be set apart. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. So we went from 22,000 to, <laughs> or 32,000, <laughs> to 10,000. Now we're down to 300. Now God can certainly get the glory. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink. So they, to get on, they must have had to lean on their swords, laid them down, something. But the rest stuck the water and laughed like this while they still held their weapons ready. Because a warrior always stays alert. He's ready in season and out. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. Now, is that powerful? It seems, listen, when the odds seem to be against you, you're not alone. A warrior knows this. He knows that somehow it's going to work to the good, no matter what. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. He knows that the armies of the Lord are with him. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace. What's grace mean? God's plan of escape. Be strong in the plan. That is in Christ Jesus. That's why believers are followers. They're strong in the plan. Stay strong in the plan. A warrior stays strong in the plan. Doesn't drift from it. Doesn't compromise it. Stay strong in the plan. That is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men who are able to teach others. You therefore must endure hardship. Hello, welcome to the earth. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Because we're not associated with it anymore. We're separated from it. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. 
Again, a soldier endures all things. Amen. Holds position, is not moved by fear, emotion, chaos, but waits for the voice of his commander for the next thing. 1 John chapter 3. A warrior does not assume. Assuming is very dangerous. When he doesn't know what to do, he waits. Amen? Verse 7, please. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. It's that simple. What? He's, the devil's influencing him. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That means he, Jesus came to warfare. Amen? Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Again, Jesus came to destroy as a warrior. He came as a warrior in sheep's clothing. Amen? Matthew 10. A warrior doesn't try to prove himself. He's already pre-approved. Everything he does is proving who the Father is and who Jesus is, that his name may be glorified. He waits on the guidance and counsel of the Comforter and the Helper and the Spirit of Truth known as the Holy Spirit. He allows the Holy Spirit to dress him, possess him, seal him, and send him. In verse 34, Matthew 10, 34. Jesus said, I do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. In other words, the world can never have peace. There will never be peace until Jesus comes and the kingdom is established. But you can have peace within you. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be of those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me, and he who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's simple enough. Amen. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel 17. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Praise God. Warriors training. We don't have Bible studies, we have training sessions. We're trained out of the Warrior's Manual. Verse seven, uh, chapter 17, verse 44, please. Glory. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you moron. No. <laughs> you come to me with what? A sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. In other words, physical weapons. Does everybody get it? But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and wild beasts of the earth, 
that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Did that happen? Amen. Well, remember, David was anointed. Amen. But he didn't take physical weapons, even though he had stones. Come on, it take a, you know, think about it. He slung with a, a sling and a stone hit the dude right in the head, right? Knocked him out, which the stone represented the word because he spoke the word and would it affect his thoughts? Knocked him out, then he took his head. Why? Because that's what we're to do, cut the serpent's heads off. Amen? That's how we fight. Our weapons are spiritual. Warrior knows that his weapons are spiritual. He keeps them ready all the time. Second Chronicles 20. See, you're here to not just be free from bondages, but to be free from yourself. Because that's the worst bondage. Amen. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Second Chronicles verses. Hallelujah. Everybody there yet? And twenty twenty twenty. Verse twenty. Second Chronicles twenty, verse twenty. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat, who was the king, stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Established. Believe in his prophets, the words that are being released, and you shall what? Prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And we're saying, praise the Lord for his mercy. And so they went out before the physical army. They were warfaring spiritually. Amen? <laughs> See, a warrior understands the weapon of praise. That's why when things happen, they start singing. Glory. Now, verse 21, when he hit... Um, verse 22, I'm sorry. When they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. So the Lord set ambushes against himself. Where he brought confusion in the enemy's camp. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly killed and destroyed them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So God caused them to kill each other. That's when you praise and worship, that's what the, what's happening in the spirit realm. The demons are slamming into each other. They don't know where to go. And when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. I said no one escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, you know, a, a warrior knows that God wants to bless and prosper them. What? To assist. To assist in expand, expanding the kingdom, not their own empire. 2 Corinthians 10. He does far above all we could ever ask or, ask or think. Remember, Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly. And a warrior knows that. He does not chase money. A warrior does not chase money. Not that money doesn't come their way. Hello. But they're not eager to chase money. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Let's speak it. For though we walk in the flesh or physical, we do not war according to the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God and pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? Memory lies. 
casting out arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience, and your obedience is fulfilled. See, they renew themselves, they refresh themselves in their thoughts with the eternal thoughts and truths every day. They know. They know when a corruptible seed is trying to penetrate. They know, and they cast it down. They know when something's at a distance, doesn't have to get close to them. They know ahead of time. Why? Because the Spirit of God tells them all things to come. You can sense that. When the presence of God is on you and you're filled enough with the Spirit of God, you'll know what's happening. That first inclination when you'll say no. No. First Peter chapter 5. And one of the things is because they're dressed with the full armor of God, that helmet of salvation, in that it is the knowledge of Christ. It is the, the message of truth that is constantly flowing in their mind, their thoughts. That doesn't mean we get granola amen? You go do your job, but you're, you always got a sword in one hand and a hammer in another, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. 1 Peter chapter 5. In verse 8, please. Glory. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? Let's speak it together. Be what? Sober. What's sober mean? Alert. Be alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. Can you be consistent without being disciplined? No. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he can deceive and devour and manipulate. Hello? It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So listen, you're not the only one that goes through it. Everybody gets attacked. That's whether you overcome or not. That's whether you're a warrior or not. That's whether you battle or not. You're either in a survival mode or surrender mode. And for your survival mode, you're in the flesh. The surrender mode is in the spirit. Amen? 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 3. Is everybody there? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Now by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commands. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to himself also walk just as he Walked. We're to walk like him with obedience and submission. Second Timothy four. Knows his call, purpose, and destiny. Striving in the area of the likeness of the integrity of Christ. We are called to what? Battle. What's our purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. Amen? So we have a call, a purpose, and destiny. That should be something that should be known all the time. A warrior always knows that. Always. He knows he's called to warfare. He knows he's called to battle. He knows his purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom because he hates evil. He knows his destiny is to infiltrate the world and take it for Jesus. Amen? Always knows that. No matter where he goes or where she goes or whatever, that's always there. It's constant. Constant. Hallelujah. Second Peter 4, verse 1. Second uh, Timothy 4, sorry. Is that what I said? Is everybody there yet? Timothy, right? Cool. Verse, chapter 4, verse 1. 
I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. What? Preach the word. Be ready in season and out. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Are we there? I would say so. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry or your calling, purpose, and destiny. Amen. We're to be ready in season at all times. We are, should be ready to lay down any agenda to pick up the sword at any time. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9. Warrior's life. Some people won't do it. They'll say it, but they, they really don't want to do it. They don't want to be a warrior. They just rather be a citizen. Hang out in the outer court, you know. And play with the life that God gave them and in and out, up and down. Challenge God to see how much he's going to allow them to get away with. Nobody gets away with anything. Everybody reaps what they sow. Amen? A warrior knows those things. Thinks all the time, whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. Whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. I want to treat others as I want to be treated. Always knows these things. Why? Because they're alert. They're sensitive to these things. They know it. They're a warrior of Christ. They're representing him. Verse 19. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. For though I am free from all men... I have made myself a servant to all, that I may, might win the more. To the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, is yes, under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, are as without law, <clears throat> not being without law towards God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win weak. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That's infiltration, isn't it? He's in fulfilling his destiny. <clears throat> now this I do for the gospel's sake that I may be partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Disciplined. Disciplined. I'm telling you, a warrior is disciplined. He knows when to speak and not to speak. Amen? He knows when God's timing. He knows when to move and when not to move. He knows when to battle in something and not battle in something. He knows when to turn it over to the Lord or battle. He waits on that command all the time. Remember, David went to the Lord and said, Lord, are we to go out and fight or not? And the Lord would say, no, not yet. I, I got this one. I have to go to the Lord on everything that comes across my face. Lord, am I supposed to do something about it or you are? He'll tell me either wait, I'll get back with you, I'll give you a call, you know. Or he's got it. Or he'll tell me to take care of it. Luke chapter 9, please. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4. A warrior is always not putting himself first. A warrior does not put himself first. He denies himself. If you put yourself first, then you're not a warrior. First Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. Verse 1. 
Let's speak it together. Verse 1, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. A warrior is faithful. You can trust in that person. When they say something, they're going to do it. They may forget it, but they're going to do it. Verse 3. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. That's a warrior. He stands before the Lord all the time and does self-examination. Lord, search me through. Remove those things that offend you and cause me to stumble. <clears throat> Amen? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, that each one's praise will come from God. Whoa. Again, we're to be stewards. Stewards. Good stewards. Faithful stewards. Amen? Trustworthy. Loyal. That's a warrior. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. A warrior does not love the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. In other words, he's not associated with the world system. Amen? We are under the government of Christ Jesus. There's a government here. It's a world system. We know it's demonic. It's run by the Antichrist regime. Like I said, we got the Antichrist regime in the White House. We got them in all positions, political, judicial. Their whole thing is nothing about making money and having power and controlling people. They sacrifice. They set wars to shed blood. The more blood shed they, they shed, the more they get rewarded. Look at those twin towers came down to kill people. They already knew it. They stepped back. Come on, think about this. The United States technology, the strongest technology in the world, the most in, 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 uh, intelligence, they didn't know this was happening. Of course they did. It was set up by them. They shed blood to sacrifice to Satan to be rewarded. Look at what happens. Think about this, even in the music. Look how many... Play, um, uh, massacres that have happened. Look how much music, even and even things that have happened at concerts. Places started on fire or certain things that have happened, they escape. Things that were set up. Things are set up all the time. Wars are set up to shed blood. Listen, when the blood, enough blood is shed, a portal opens so they can access. That's the purpose of shedding human blood. See, it's not just human blood. Does everybody understand that? It's the blood that God created for mankind to exist. Because life of the flesh is in the blood. That's why they sacrifice humans. That's why children are sacrificed and all kinds of other things are sacrificed. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. He said, the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Hello. Even now, many Antichrists have come. They're called, a, uh, they're in the many of the uh, news media. They're journalists and news reporters. Amen. By which we know that it is the last hour. They, but they're being all exposed and arrested now, so it's all happening. Watch what happens in the next 10 days. Praise be to God. Woohoo! It's coming to an end. Justice and righteousness will be established. Glory to God. <laughs> that says they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Hello. A warrior knows. 
Romans 8. A warrior's life. Do you, are you willing to pay the price for the warrior's life? That's the whole question. Now, God sent you here to become a warrior and have a warrior's life. Whether you choose to accept it or not, if you're just satisfied with salvation, if you're just satisfied to go to church, if you're just satisfied whatever, and not be a warrior, that's up to you. Amen? Romans 8, 18. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with, which, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. Warriors. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That is around the corner. It will be for a period of time. Hello? <coughs> we are still in what they call the birth pangs or beginning and sorrows. Tribulation has not started yet. But there are things preparing for tribulation. Amen. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. <laughs> yes. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does the one hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Amen. Endurance. How many of y'all know you need endurance? Amen. Endurance. I'm going to close at Psalm 15. Especially during worship. He endures all the way to the end. He praises and worships till he drops. It's like, you know, when people go shopping, they say they shop till they drop, you know, stuff like that. I'll never forget when we used to have our anointing Friday night services in a, a, a larger sanctuary. And we had a bunch of new people come in, and, and we were praising and worshiping and so forth and having a great time. And some people left early. And these were athletes. So we found out later, what did you leave early for? Oh, I need to go get something to eat. What's the matter? You couldn't endure? No. You can go out there and play tennis for four hours and you couldn't endure two hours of worship? Hello? Well, they learned. They went right. They, they learned. They endured afterwards, man, and they loved it when they finally broke through, through themselves. See, it's just self that's always in the way. Sometimes you've got to slap the hell out of yourself and make room for heaven. Amen? Get out. Cast it down. Glory. Ro oh, Psalm 15. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 15. And if you can't do it, ask someone to do it for you. That's okay. <laughs> Let's speak it. Verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And who may dwell in your holy hill or in your presence? He who what? Walks uprightly. Now this is a warrior who works righteousness. Who speaks the truth in his heart. Who does not backbite with his tongue. He shuts up. He knows when to speak and not to speak. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. In other words, he's not a provoker. Whose eyes a vile person is despised. But honors those who what? Fears the Lord. Fears. The, he honors them. Respects them. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He will not change no matter what's up. He who does not put out his money at usury. 
nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He doesn't let money move them from position. He who does these things shall what? Never be moved, man. I mean, what a guideline. If people would just do Psalm 15, praise God. What a guideline. The choice is yours. You want a, war, a life of a warrior or you want a life of a wimp? Praise God. God's raising up warriors. That's why you're here. Don't wimp out. Man up, woman up, and warrior up. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. <laughs> and we thank you for what's getting ready to come because we will all be challenged, whether we're wimps or warriors, for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. Amen.